In this tutorial, we will make a simple symbol synthesizer. Before we start, let's look at the structure of what we will build, and the logic of the synthesis. As with some other percussive synths, we start from enveloped white noise. We add to this a set of different filters to shape the noise into something with a little more texture. We will also add a set of six square wave oscillators to provide some more definition to the noise. We smooth things out a little with a simple reverb. Finally, we mix the signal with a very slightly delayed copy of itself. This synthesizer model is based very heavily on the Super Collider example by Ryan Brown. There is a link to this below the video. As in other tutorials, let's start from a simple noise oscillator. We add a volume envelope. The V-line object gives us a ramp for the volume. An envelope quickly rises to 1 in 2 milliseconds, drops to 0.4 in a time that we will specify, and then takes the same amount of time to finally drop to zero. Note that I have fucking cocked this up, a bit as you will see at the end. The re-triggering will be much smoother if you remove the zero and the comma from the start of this message. The volume envelope can then be given a time value as part of the triggering process and tidied away into a sub-patch. Now let's look at the filter bank. Let's create a subpatch to put our filters into. We will use the biquad filter for this set of filters. This part of the patch that we will build here is a short diversion, so you don't need to build any of these parts unless you also want to test some things with the bike wad filter. The bike wad filter allows you to specify the filter coefficients directly and is very flexible, but it can be difficult to know how the coefficients relate to more tangible parameters, such as cutoff frequency and resonance. We will use here a quick sub patch that converts frequency and resonance into bi quad coefficients. You can find this in the patch downloads if you want to explore it for yourselves. We can see the results printed to the Pure Data console. We can connect the output directly to a bipod to test this out. For our filter bank, in order to shape our noise into something more symbol like, we want something like the following. A resonant low pass filter at 7000 Hz, a resonant high pass filter at 6800 Hz, another resonant high pass at 6800 Hz, a resonant high pass at 1200 Hz. We can specify these values to the sub patch and copy and paste the resulting by quad coefficients into a new by quad object to build the filters.
That is sounding a lot more like a classic 808 synth cymbal sound. Once we have this in place, we can remove the sub patch, or move it into a separate sub patch in case we want it later. We don't just want noise though, we also want some tones. We will use a set of square wave oscillators for the tone. One oscillator by itself gives a very defined tone, which is a bit too direct for what we want. By creating six oscillators, we get a much more diffused pitch character. Let's move this into a sub patch. The pitch of the oscillators will be one of our controllable parameters for the symbol. We don't want all the oscillators to have the same pitch though, so we scale each one differently, being careful to make sure the ratios are all slightly strange so that it doesn't sound too harmonic. Great, that sounds a bit more metallic. We can wash the sound together a little bit by putting it through a simple reverb. We are using the free verb object here, which you may need to download. You can do this by going to the help menu, selecting, find externals, and searching for free verb. We are just using the default parameters, but you might want to try some other reverb parameters for different sounds. Look at the free verb help file for more information or revisit tutorial 10 that used the object for the Hoover synth. The last thing to add is the delay. This doesn't add much, but along with the reverb it helps wash the sound together and give it a bit more texture. Now we can put it all in a sub patch, add the relevant inlets and create some controls. We do a bit of tidying here to make sure the inlets are in a useful order and make sure it initializes with some kind of pitch.
as we have done in past tutorials, we will create some sliders, give them an appropriate range, and give them each a receive symbol, so that we can send messages remotely, useful for presets. This is the fucking bit I fucking mentioned earlier where I added an unnecessary zero onto the fucking envelope. You can hear the clicking it is causing with the fast triggering. Delete the zero and the comma for better results. <laughs> 